coming back. All right, King Jesus, King of the Universe. Okay, he loves you. Satan hates you. It's not difficult. But uh, it's going to cost you. Salvation does cost you. It's just not... Uh, yeah, Jesus died for my sins. Okay. No, 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 no. Jesus says, if you believe me, you want to follow after me, you must lay down your life, pick up your cross, and uh, follow me, endure to the end, be saved. I chose you in the faith. Uh, so, uh, we don't make any money, we don't want your money, we don't want you to go to a building or read a book. Just go to the source, please. Go to the source. Right, Marcel? Amen. Yeah, religion, uh, inventions of men, rituals, you know, uh, religion, it'll, it, all of it washes away, okay? It's just you and, uh, you and the judge, the righteous judge, uh, and he looks right at you, and you know exactly what you are. That's it. And then, boom, it's like a fire, or it's enter into your rest. You know, you can't, there's no more lying anymore. When you, when you look, uh, when you're face to face with the holy God, there's no more lying. You can't lie to him, you can't lie to yourself. Uh, no more half truths. That's it. See, I was on uh, I was on a sick bed. Uh, I was pretty close to death, and I knew that I was about to uh, go to eternal torment because I was a fraud. I was a fake Christian. There was no more lying. You know, the magic words didn't work anymore. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. I was a liar. See, it wasn't true. He wasn't Lord in my life. You know, so uh, I was fake, but I've given a, God's given me a, a second chance to start walking, get on the narrow road. So that's eternal perspective. Eternal perspective. Uh, we are living in the uh, last days. Um, the righteous judge, the righteous king, is going to come back, and he's going to do away with all this, uh, all this nonsense. Um, most people hate uh, the evil and the wickedness. Uh, murder and genocide and rape and uh, all the bad things that humans do to other people. Uh, now Jesus is going to do away with that very quickly. Um, Jesus says, you will not know the exact day of my return, but you will know the season. Look at the season. Consider the fig tree. Read Matthew 24. Uh, read uh, Jesus Christ, the revelation of Jesus Christ. Okay? Uh, definitely we're in, the, we're in the times, the end times. Tell them about the... Uh that's correct. Uh, earthquakes, okay? Earthquakes all the time now. Uh, intensity, greater intensity, greater frequency. Wars, endless war. My goodness. The Americans are in two. You know, we're, uh, I think we're in two now. Endless war. Rumors of wars. Nation will rise against nation. An increase of wickedness, okay? Uh, genetic manipulation, genetic alteration, weather manipulation. Uh, with the, the rise of technology, there is no limit to the wickedness. The human heart is wicked, we all know that. But merge that with the kind of modern day technology, uh, and they are doing things under the earth that uh, would make you uh, throw up, really. Transhumanism, eugenics, um, you know, you look at the two-headed, uh, 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 the two-headed, uh, um, uh, lamb, sheep, dolly. I'm telling you, man, the technology in these deep underground bases is so far ahead of what we've got now. Uh, there's stuff down there that uh, that is really wicked. So anyways, don't have to worry about that. Just cast your lot in with the good king. Satan hates you. God loves you. Uh, but you got to obey. I mean, the mercy, uh, uh, the mercy is on the table. It's through his son. I mean, he died for you. You don't save, okay? Muhammad doesn't save. Buddha doesn't save. Jesus saves. Jesus saves from hell. Jesus saves from that horrible, horrible place. You know? Just repent. Start walking today. And it'll take you right where you're at. Amen.
whole world see. We're singing for the glory of a risen King. Jesus, sing it louder. Let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of a risen King. Jesus. Salvation is today. Salvation is today. Don't wait too late. You don't want to wait for judgment day. You don't want to wait for judgment day. Let God judge you today. The Bible says that all have fallen short of the glory of God. We've all sinned. We've all transgressed. But God doesn't want to leave you there. He wants to raise you up in newness of life and give you a new heart. Transform your heart to do the things that are pleasing to Him. It's His will be done, Toronto, whether you whether you accept this plea bargain, whether you accept the mercy that God has given in Jesus Christ. It's up to you. One day we'll all stand before a holy God and give an account of our life. Change your mind today, Toronto. Be reconciled to God. Confess your sins to God, and He'll be faithful and just to forgive you of your sins. And when you screw up, even though we don't use God as a vending machine, when we screw up, Jesus' blood helps us to overcome. When we make mistakes, Jesus already paid for our mistakes. What an awesome privilege to serve the King. We love you, Toronto. Change your mind today. Think about your life. God does not dwell in temples made by the hands of man. He'll dwell in you. That's what the Bible says. Your body is the temple of God. God will come and dwell in your life and be real to you, not just a figment of your imagination. Not just some religious thing, but a, God will really touch you. That's why I come out here and preach to you, because God touched me. When I was a young man, I went to church, and I didn't, I'd never been touched by God. It wasn't until I received the touch of the Holy Ghost that I knew that God was real. The Bible says if we, bow, if we choose to be baptized into the character of the Lord Jesus, the name of the Lord Jesus, you will receive the gift of His Spirit and power. He will give you power to be a witness for Him. That's why we testify. We only testify the things that have, we have seen and we have heard. You know, we don't have any big money be behind us. We don't, we don't necessarily fellowship at any one place. This is fellowship. We fellowship in the sufferings of Christ to go out and preach His Word, to 
deny ourselves and do His will through this vapor of life, so that we would, in the hopes that we would be rewarded. Hear the words, well done, now good and faithful servant. God is calling you every day, Toronto. Don't hesitate. Don't procrastinate. This could be the last day that you get an opportunity to turn to God. It could be the last time that God gives you an opportunity to accept His mercy. Settle out of court with Him today. If you hear the words of God speaking to you today, you need to turn your, turn your eyes to Him. Don't harden your heart. You know, you might have a smile on your face and you think that you're going to keep your life going and sustain yourself, but one day you're going to find out the hard way. Oh, don't let that happen. Repent. Repent. Seek God while He may be found. Don't seek the Blue Jays and the Raptors and American Idol and all these things that the world offers you. These things are temporal. They pass away. But all we do is run around and seek after trivial pursuits. They're trivial because they, they all will end, end in nothing one day. Bless you, brother. Turn to the living God today, Toronto. Jesus already paid your debt. Did you know that Jesus paid your sin? Your sin is paid for. God's already paid your sin. But you have to accept. You have to testify. You need to know. You need to make this. You need this to be made known to you. Most of you don't even know it. You've heard it in text. You've read it in text. You've heard it in words. But you, it's never been made real to you. Some of you guys don't even see that you're a sinner. You know. You need to ask God to show you. If you don't know that you're a sinner, you need to ask God to show you. You need to see that you need a savior. Who was this man, Jesus, that said he came to save you from yourself, from your sin, from your self-seeking? Who was this man, Jesus? Was he God like he claimed to be? Or was he just some kind of nice guy, religious leader? Change your mind, Toronto. Stop and judge yourself. For all the things you're running around after in the world. You can amass all the things of the world, but when you stand before Jesus on Judgment Day, nobody will care about those things. Nobody will care about their trivial pursuits like they're pursuing today. The trophy wife and the, the, the big house in the suburbs, and your toy dog, and your fancy car, and your, and your fancy clothes, and your fancy shoes, and your fancy career, and all these things that we pursue. They're all temporal things. They won't last forever. The Word of God lasts forever. It endures forever. Let God write His Word on your heart and mind and walk in obedience. And your life will be extended to eternal status. Think about what you're living for, Toronto. We love you. May the grace of God fall on you tonight.
Sing the song of your heart. Just sing praises to God. He's worthy. You know? Oh, the Bible says that the Spirit of God inhabits our praises. When we praise God, He actually comes in spirit. You know? We can't see spirit. You know, if somebody died right in front of us, you wouldn't be able to see them come out of the body, but we'd see the evidence that the Spirit has left the body. You know? The Bible says that Jesus gave up the ghost. So it was finished, and then He gave up the ghost. The spirit within God is holy. He is the spirit that is holy. He's the spirit of truth. That's what this world needs. This world needs the spirit of truth. You know? We need the spirit of righteousness. You know, we need to respect God. We need to fear God. Start doing it His way. You know? Stop living for your flesh, Torah. You live for the flesh, the flesh passes away. Live for the spirit. Be born again. If you're not happy with your life and you wish you weren't born, then try being born again. Maybe you should submit to God and actually do what He actually said, instead of ignoring Him every day. You know? It's amazing, you know? We ignore the God who made us. We believe the foolish lies that we came from monkeys, or that there's some kind of fossil record that proves it. There isn't. But there's more evidence that believe, to believe in God than there is anything, you know? And it's not just text. It's not just the Bible. It's not just, uh, you know, it's handing out DVDs with truth. You know, God wants to baptize you with the Spirit. It's a real encounter. When I was 18, I didn't understand Jesus died for me. I knew it in my head, you know, because I'd been taught it academically in church. I heard about this man, Jesus the Christ, claimed he was God. You know, we sang songs. I cried sometimes. I felt God's presence. But it still wasn't real to me. I didn't understand Jesus really died for me. I didn't even know I was a sinner. So God let me go away and sin for four years, you know? He allowed me to, you know, he, he paid for that already. Jesus paid for those four years I was living in sin. Every sin that I've ever committed, he's already paid for it one time, you know? He already made the payment for all of you guys. Every time he's sick, God's already paid for it. You want to keep openly crucifying Christ, you know? Some of you guys know it. Your mama, your mama taught you well, but you're living for the world. You're living for a fake Jesus. You need to live for the king, you know? But anyways, I was serving the... I was looking for the truth, you know, and it wasn't until after I'd, I'd come right to ground zero. I'd given up all the things that I was told to hold thoroughly true, you know? Sex before marriage, you know, without commitment in my heart truly, you know, and, and uh, drunkenness and smoking drugs, and I was a big athlete. People saw me go, like, from big athlete to zero, you know? I shaved myself, you know, and God let me do it because I needed to be humble. I needed to be humble. That's the whole essence of, of the gospel. When you repent, you humble yourself. You see? So God had to humble my heart. And then I saw, and then he got, I got touched by the Holy Ghost. This was a real encounter. A real encounter when God, His Spirit fell on me. You know? This wasn't just something I imagined. You know? You can ask some of my friends. Today a friend of mine came that I used to smoke drugs with years ago. I haven't seen him in years. I've been wondering what happened to him. I tried to find him on Facebook and stuff. Couldn't find him. And guess what? He's married now. This guy used to be a gangster. He got kicked out of high school, chased somebody through the school with a machete because he's just full of anger. You know? Because he had been hurt in his life. But he was just full of anger, you know, so if someone took them off, he'd just lose it. He didn't have the fruit of the spirit, like self-control, you know. 
But he saw me get told of the Holy Ghost. I went through all my drug paraphernalia. You know, he saw what happened to me. I called him up. I said, Shamil, man, God touched me, man. You know, and I, I went and I was testifying to my friends for months. And then, I, then the devil deceived me, and I thought that I was rejecting my friends. So I smoked up again, and I lost that, that pure, pureness in heart. But for about six months, I was kind of in limbo. So I wasn't really bound, because God had set me free, but I kind of clouded up my mind by that entering back into it. But in the first three months, I, I, I saw things I could talk to you for five minutes, and I knew your heart, and it scared the crap out of me. You know, I, I had giftings that I didn't even know how to handle. And God knew that, so he let me fall on my face in the spring almost right away, and then I came back. I came back, and then God said to me in November, he says, what do you want? And I said, I want you. He says, well, then do it. Do what I said. You see? You want to know what the, uh, the hallmark of heaven is? It's obedience. That's what the hallmark of this world is. You, you submit to the Toronto, and if you don't, you go to jail. You see? So you're submitting to a master, a, a society, a system. But won't you submit to the king who gave us anything that we have that's good in this life? Don't you understand? Like, Toronto wouldn't be the Toronto, the city that it is, if, if it has any morality. It comes from the king. It comes from the Lord Jesus. It comes from the Ten Commandments, the Word of God. You know, don't kill, don't steal. Where do you think that comes from? You know? Is it really hard to believe that God flooded the whole earth? There's tons of evidence if you look for it. But there's people that don't want you to believe that because if you believe that, and you'll see more and more and more that the Bible is actually true. That Jesus was who he said he was. You know? So change your heart, Toronto. Look at your life. I beseech you. You know, we're not here to hate on you. You know, if you, if you want to be sexually immoral, that's fine, but it's going to lead to death right now and eternally. You know? You know? Change your heart from doing it your way. Start doing it God's way. You know, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. And then he says, goes on to say two verses later that he is the Father. You know? The Bible says that God, the fullness of God dwelt in Jesus bodily. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. You know? God manifests in three ways or three persons, whatever way you want to look at it, but the main thing is we need to do His will. We need to go out and do His will. If we have this great love from God, then we need to show it. John, James, the book of James, James says you have faith, show me your works then. I'll show you my works. Okay? So it's not a matter of doing our own works and we're not called to imagine up things to do for God. We keep it simple. We just go out and call people just like the apostles. Repent and believe. Repent and obey. You know? And you got to consecrate your life too. That's a key that most Christians don't understand. They want to live part-time in the world and then, but God is a holy God. He's jealous for his bride. You know, just like a husband is jealous for his wife. You don't want your woman messing around, right? Even verbal affairs with other men. You know? You don't want her getting any satisfaction from any other guy, even if it's a look. You want her to be totally captivated by you. And you want you want her, she wants you to be captivated by her. And that's what you see here. We're testifying to you that we're captivated by the love of God. I don't want to give myself to any, anybody else or anything else. The Bible says it defines Christians all over the place. You know, you can look at Galatians 5.24. It says anybody who's in Christ has crucified their lusts and their passions and their affections. I got one passion now. I killed all my other passions. You understand? And then, and then and when we got 1 John 2.15. It says anybody who's, who loves says they love God and doesn't do what, they, what he asked them to is a liar and the truth isn't in them. You know, and then we got, well, sorry, that's not 1 John 2.15, that's 1 John 2, 3 and 4. And then we got 1 John 2.15. 1 John 2.15 says, this is another definition of a Christian. If you love the world or the things of the world, the love of the Father, even if you claim it, it's not in you. You know? Stop loving the world. Love the creator. Don't love the creation. Right? We're so mesmerized by the creation. We're not giving glory to God. And you're getting you're only being honored in the halls of men at best, even if you even get to that place. Most people want to be wanna wanna have some kind of uh, wanna be somebody. They want to be someone in the eyes of men. I did. And I was seeking out to the praises of men. And then God says, Why don't you take my narrow road, take up my cross, and seek my praises, and you won't get all the glory right now. I'll get the glory which is which I'm due, but then I'm gonna honor you in the halls of heaven. Uh, which one's going to last forever? Okay, the Sports Hall of Fame, the Hockey Hall of Fame, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. 
Most of it's founded on satanic garbage anyways. Yeah, it is. Jimi Hendrix was tormented. Did you know that? He was tormented by demons. We have DVDs to show you on that stuff. Stuff that Hollywood doesn't tell you. They want you to, tell, they want you to think it's such a glamorous lifestyle. How about Britney Spears? She feels like a rag doll, you know? But you know what? She can't let go. Because there is no other life anywhere else. She doesn't see anybody even presenting the life. You know? Most of the life that Christians present is a building on Sundays. Where's the power, man? Is God impotent? You know? Is God an impotent God? You know what I mean? You know, it's pretty powerful to see a man, either I'm crazy or God's living in my life, right? I can admit it to you. But I have power to preach. I know that I'm reaching some of your hearts, even if you don't fully understand yourself. But I'm not here to brainwash you. The Word of God will wash your mind clean. You see? I stopped preaching my own words. Just preach what God has shown me. I testify of the things that I have seen and heard. You know what I mean? God can, can clean up your heart and your mind. The Bible says it in Christ, in the Word, when you are in the Word of God, you become a new creation. All things pass away. Well, behold, all things become new. You see? I used to smoke drugs. Look at me. I'm a different man now. You know? I don't do sorcery, sorcery and witchcraft anymore. You know what I mean? Well, there's no high like the most high. You know what I mean? Oh, you need to you need to taste. You need to taste and see, Tehran. Where's your joy today? You have joy or you just have happiness? I got joy, man. Oh, the privilege of serving the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And you know, I thought that I'd be cool, man. I thought people, man, that, that guy's cool. Remember, I remember the next day, I was sitting in my bathtub, and I looked at my tattoo, and this this sense came over my spirit, like nobody even cares, you know. And yet, I got so hyped up that my friend offered to buy me a tattoo, you know. And I got it. I didn't really care, but you know. And then I realized nobody even gives a crap. You know, but that's what we do. We're trying to, the, the core of what man tries to do is they want to be somebody. It's like, who am I? Who am I? What was I created for? Who created me? These are fundamental questions you need to ask yourself. You know? And trust me, God is not found in organized religion. You can go to church, or what they call the church. This is the church, okay? People that obey God and not, are not ashamed to do His will and preach His word. But the church that they call the building center, or the fun center, you got to be careful when you go there, because most of it's an apostasy today. Just like the Bible prophesied 2,000 years ago, it would be, okay? They talk all the talk, and they use Jesus' words. But if you really look at their actions, they never really serve Him with their whole heart. You know, it's part-time Christianity, you know, which is no Christianity. It's not following Christ, you know, but you can still go and you, if they preach the Bible still, instead of their own PhDs and divination, you, you can hear what the Word of God says because the Word of God is true. It's outlasted every claim pastor and prophet. Hold on, brother. Hold on. Amen. The Word of God is, is outlasted every claim to be pastor. You know, there's people like, you ever heard of John Calvin? Look, look, John yeah. Calvin said he was a man of God. Do you know John Calvin killed people over doctrines? He was like a Saul. Remember Paul? Was used to be Saul, and then the Spirit of God fell upon him. Jesus touched him on the road to Damascus. And then he said, everything I knew, I thought I knew before, was like crap. Until the Spirit of God made the word that I knew so well, memorized, became living to me. See? I memorized, I used to know the Bible, because I went to Bible school, or Bible, Bible week college, like, Sunday school, but it wasn't until the Spirit of God made it living to me, I understood it, you know, it was just dead, that's what the Bible says, it says the letter, the, the, the text of the Bible is dead without the Spirit, you need 
to steer it to make it living. It's like if you write a book and we all read it, are we going to understand the same thing? No way, right? So how do I find out what you were saying behind these words I'm reading? I go to you. I cry out to you. Say, bro, I need to know what you mean here. And then you say, this is what I mean. Not that or this. This is what I mean. You see? But so many people can only seek God a little bit. They only learn a little bit and then they run off. Of the